live from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Bahrain in the Middle East. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage. Here for the first time, covering Amazon Web Services, AWS's public sector, and the breaking news around their new region that they announced a while ago, going to be deployed here in the early 2019 timeframe. An Amazon region really is the power source of digital. It is, has a track record of creating so much value and innovation. And I'm here with Teresa Carlson, who's the head. She's the chief of public sector. She's the head of Amazon Web Services public sector globally except for China, but that's a different territory. Teresa Carlson, great to see you. It's so great to have you here with us, oh my goodness. So I got to say, you know, the, you told me a few years ago, you know, we're going to really go international, we're doubling down outside North America, we're going to have regions, Andy Jassy, yeah. the CEO of AWS, said the same, this is the strategy of Amazon, but the Middle East was your baby. Yeah. This is something that you did spend a lot of time on, and a lot of decisions, Everyone wants to know, why Bahrain? Yeah. Why did you choose this region? And what, are the, what, are the, what do you see happening and how's it going? Well, you know, it's interesting because I have had a lot of people say, why Bahrain as the first region that you put in the Middle East? Because it doesn't seem like the first place somebody would choose. And the thing that kept coming back to me is, uh, Jeff has always said, we're, be, we're willing to be misunderstood for long periods of time. And I think this is probably one of those times where people just didn't quite understand why Bahrain. Well, here's why. I met the Crown Prince. We talked about digital innovation and the economy here. And he immediately got that they needed to go through a digital transformation. They are not a country that has a lot of oil. They are a smaller country and they really are a working class uh, country that is looking for how do they have sustainment? And they've done things in the fa past around financial services that really got them going. They were kind of, they would spearhead things. And um, I think he saw the opportunity that this could help them jumpstart the economy and they could kind of be a hub yeah. for innovation. So they created the right uh, policies around cloud first. They uh, created the right telecommunications policy. They were one of the first to deregulate. Uh, they had good pricing for utilities. They were friendly toward businesses. And they had kind of a culture that we felt, felt could fit well with us as well as our partner community. A couple of observations being the first time here, so thank you for inviting yeah. us and um, allowing us to cover you here. One, they're a learning culture. Yes. They speak multiple languages. Why not add programming to it, software? Yeah. Two, they like to move fast. Yes. They are just built a track in 14 months. They're not afraid to go faster. They, they go they, fast. That's Amazon. Yep. Amazon, yep. you guys move at a speed of a whole nother cadence. And then two, I think there's a, my observation, again, comparing to other areas as I look around, is that the pop, percentage of the population of bah Bahrainians is large. There's a lot of people who live here yes. that are native. Yeah. Yep. And they're talented. Well, one of the things you said that I think is key is that they are, they move fast, they're used to being frugal and how they do things, and they're very scrappy. And that really fits with their culture, because again, they have to do things different than some of the other Middle East countries who are, not, you know, they're, they're not quite as rich, but they have this culture of really moving fast, and they took down blockers like crazy. I mean, as we came in and had, were making a decision on- What were some of those blockers? Well, like, I stumbling mean- Stumbling blocks, are they more hurdles? What were they? They were, they were, they were stumbling blocks, but they were, we had to really come in and talk about why telecommunications policies and pricing had to change because in an old school model of telco, there's a lot of, char just a lot of big charges. Yeah. Uh, and when you have a digital economy coming in, if you think about you have, you have a few transactions for a lot of money in an old school, in a new school world you have millions of transactions for a little bit because you got to be able to transact a lot. And that's the way your telecommunications industry has got to be set up. As well as you want it deregulated. They had already deregulated it, so they worked with us to open it up, to set the policies, and now Betelco, 
who is one of our major telecommunications partners here, is doing manages, managed services on AWS. They've gotten all kinds of people trained. Yep. And it's just an example of how they look at an opportunity and say, we have got to innovate and make changes if we want to have a sustainment in the yep. 21st century economy. And you guys are bringing a lot of goodness to the table. They're quick learners, yep. they're smart, they got the entrepreneurial vibe. They're not afraid to put some funds of funds together and get some professional investment going on. So that's going to level up the entrepreneurship base. The question is, when will the uh, region be ready? Yep. How's that going? It's under construction, we've been hearing. It's been impacting yep. and, and frankly, bringing in to this country an agenda item of sustainability and sustainable energy. Well, right, yeah. why would they need sustainable energy? They got oil. So, well, <laughs> they, they, they why burn it <laughs> if you can sell it? That's what the British yeah. prime <laughs> Well, they do, and they've had a new find, but I think they have to get to the new oil that they found, but they're not, I think, that, what I understand, they're not banking on that, they're going to bank on a digital economy. So they know this is kind of a guaranteed way to really grow what they're doing and bring it out outside others. There's two, there's two big elements they're doing. One is they're creating policies for data that allows other countries to put their data here safely, and with the right laws. That is game changing. So that's one big thing they're doing. The second thing is they have this spirit of kind of teaching and training. So they're getting other countries to come in and, and talk to them about what they're doing. And remember, John, they're already moving the government to the cloud and they don't even have their cloud here yet. So they've done all their homework and they're already yeah. moving workloads into the cloud that they don't feel need to be here, but they've looked at security design, compliance practices, and they're like, we're moving, we're not waiting. They're cloud first. They're cloud first. Okay, so when is the when do you expect the uh, construction to be ready, ballpark? I know you can't probably give an exact date, but when? What? We expect it'll be ready by Q1 of 2019, and uh, we are excited, it's going to be one of the most innovative regions. And by the way, I don't know if you saw, I had a big star on the map today in my presentation. We have literally at AWS had a big hole in the world with no region in the Middle East or Africa. And now we are going to have this region. So it is exciting yeah. and I know that the region itself is really anxious to get going. Well not only are you an amazing executive, I've seen you work, I've seen what you've done, checking the boxes, doing the hard work, getting down in the, in, in dirty and doing hustling and scrapping, but you also made some good strategic bets. This one really is successful because I think two things, you bring a region to the area for AWS, right. but you guys are doing it in a way that's partnering with the government. You're actually, yeah. con as industry, contributing. And I think that's a case there that's going to probably be recognized down the road when people figure that out, but yeah. that's going to be a great one. But the cultural win for you is pretty amazing. And I have to say, um, yesterday I went to the women breakfast that you hosted, yeah. and I've never been at a women breakfast, and I've been to a lot of them, <laughs> because I like to be involved, where I get kicked out of a table because they need the space. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so crowded. Yeah. Sorry, guys, you're out. I got, you know, <laughs> booted. But I didn't leave the room, I had to just move right, out of, because yeah. they had workshops. Yeah. Take a minute to explain the women breakfast you have, because I think that was extraordinary, and a proof point that the narrative of the region, women don't go to school, all this nonsense that's out there, take a minute to clarify, because yeah. this is a cultural shift. Yeah. There might the, be some cultural things going on. Well, the women are here, hashtag smart is beautiful. They are like amazing. And they are very educated, and in fact, 53% of the government workforce here are females at high level jobs too. They're not just, they're not just low level. And I actually met with the king this week who told me that he uh, was able, he, he uh, has the first Supreme Court justice that's a female in the Middle East. And he said it was against culture but he did it because this, he said this woman was so amazing and she was so talented and she fit the role, she had the job description down and he said it's gone great. So the women here are smart, they're talented, they're educated and they actually get degrees in computer science. Here in Bahrain, 60% of the computer science students are females. Now, what is not happening is they're not always getting out and getting these jobs and the second thing is right now, we're still working with them to teach the right skills. A lot of the skills are actually outdated tech skills, and I know John, you see yeah. this too, even in the US. 
you have universities that are yeah. still teaching the wrong skills for cloud. Yeah. So we are working with them at the university and the high school level to actually teach and certify on the right skills. But the women are talented, they're amazing. There are some cultural things that we're kind of going to work together on, but th there's really no reason we can't have an amazing and talented workforce of women here in the Middle East. We had Mohammed on, who's the chief executive of the IGA, the Information E-Government Authority. Yeah. He told me that any citizen can get a certification for free in this country. Yes, oh my gosh, so I've never seen this. So our partner here, Tam Keen, who's like the labor fund, uh, about a year and a half ago agreed that any citizen that got a certification on AWS, it would be 100% paid for. And then we just announced today that they're actually also going to pay 100% of Bahraini companies that want to move to the cloud. They are serious about this. I mean, they are serious and they are being a role model. And again, John, why are they doing it? They are doing it because they realize that they want to be a true digital economy and yep. grow this, grow their businesses here and create new. They've got to move faster because they're smaller, they got to be scrappier, yeah. they got to move faster, they got to do things a little bit different. The other thing I want to point out, you can't really see it on the camera, but behind us you have essentially a mix of commercial and public sector. The show here is so, so crowded. Yeah. Couldn't get into the uh, keynote speech. Overflow room was packed. This is attracting everyone from the Gulf region yeah. here, not just public sector, That's right. but commercial businesses. Absolutely. This is not a one-time thing. This is a, right. the, the pent-up demand is here. What do you expect is going to happen when the region gets here, built out? Well, you, if you look at all the partners around, I mean, like you have Trend Micro over here and others, many of them have come because they're excited about us putting a region here. And Andy, Jassy, and I both have had many of our partners say, when are you going to have a region in the Middle East? So we expect a lot more partners are going to come. Just like you, they're going to see the value of being here. Uh, but additionally, I don't know what we're going to do for a conference or summit because we've already outgrown this space. And you're right, we have delegates here from Jordan, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, of course Bahrain, Kuwait, the US. Uh, so many different groups are being yep. represented here. And I think also South Africa, we have some folks from South Africa. Well the Cube is here, we're making great observations and great commentary. I got to say that you know, you're even attracting amazing talent from the US besides the Cube. General Keith Alexander was here. Yes, he was. John Wood from Telos. Yep. And all these partners, all visionaries who see the opportunity. This is, yep. this is important. It, you're not being misunderstood by the people who know Amazon. No, I agree. And, and you made a point earlier that I think is important, which this, even though I'm kind of here for this conference leading it, this is not a public sector conference. It's a AWS summit. It has tons of commercial, tons of public sector, the thing that's a little bit different when you get to some of these countries, they are more government-led, so that is the reason it's important to have this relationship yeah. with government if you really want to, but you don't want to surprise them yeah. and you want to work with them to help make sure that, that they and the country are successful. Well, Teresa, it's been fun to observe and watch your successes continue to raise the bar here in your job. This is a whole nother level when you talk about really fill in the hole, yeah. you know, you yeah. see a hole, you fill yeah. it. Find so a hole, I heard someone it. say that <laughs> once in a motivational speech, oh, that was you. Yeah, you see a hole, you fill it. <laughs> oh, we got a hole in the Middle East, fill it. You have a region here, you, you got great success in yeah. Washington, D.C., CIA, oh, other governments, congratulations, and thanks for all your support. Thank you, John, you. for being here, thank you. Thank you, live coverage here. We are here in Bahrain, in the Middle East, the Cube's first time. I'm John Furrier, your host here covering the exclusive Amazon Web Services Summit and covering the historic launch of the new region in the Middle East. This should change the game. This is going to be a digital hub. It's going to have impact to entrepreneurship, economics, and society. We'll be covering it. Stay with us for more after this short break.